Hey everybody, it's Mike Pingle here with Collector's Haven. Today we are going to dive deep into the Flintstones. Meet the Flintstones. Yep, yeah, but 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 yeah. Can't pay that royalty fee, can I? Hey, Dave, how are you today? Good, Mike. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you for taking the time to chat with me about your lovely, lovely, lovely Flintstone collection. Uh, what? How did you become collecting Flintstones? Uh, I guess when I was about three or four, I was just infatuated with the show and whatever it was, I just wanted the toys. So my mom just bought whatever she could and it just started right from there and really didn't get serious until, of course, later in life because I've always had mostly cartoon toys my whole life, uh, my childhood. But then, um, you know, I, like throughout my teens, I always just had Flintstone toys and my mom collected a lot of them for me. And so I just had them and she sort of took them away from me when I was like in my late teens, early twenties, <laughs> cause I was busy doing other stuff. And I always thought it was cool but you know and she continued to buy stuff and I don't I don't know I think it was late in my mid to late 30s I started to like get really back into it and my mother had already been gone for a few years she's been gone now 19 years but um you know it was just kind of like I got really nostalgic and I was also in animation uh working for every studio and uh, it was Joe Barbera's secretary that gave me a bunch of Hanna-Barbera stuff, probably 2005, 2006 time, somewhere there. And it just made me like revisit everything. And I started taking stuff out of storage and doing inventory and, and recollecting. And going to, well, mostly slot meets, toy shows, whatever I could. And um, I just started recollecting everything. Wow, fantastic. So your mom uh, was really the one that kind of continued your collecting when you kind of stopped collecting? Well, yeah. I mean, well, I wasn't really stopped. I just was on the other things in my early 20s. And she just would go to a lot of garage sales and a lot of like estate sales and she would just continue to find things and she'd call me up and say, oh, look what I got. And I'm like, oh, that's cool, mom, whatever. But, um, and then, you know, it was towards the end of her life, you know, we were taking care of her and she was like, you really got to do something with the toys. And so I didn't think about it then until a few years later and then I just kind of got really back into it and noticed with a lot of other collectors, like we, you know, in our forties, we were like buying back a lot of stuff that we had in our childhood that we lost. Like, um, I had stuff that I could remember that I had and I would buy it back. And also being in animation, I was fortunate to know a lot of people that worked on the actual show. And I have a drawing too that um, one of the artists gave me when I was 10 years old. And my mother took it away from me and framed it. And I have it today because she protected it from me, 10 uh, year old me, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, um, and now it's like one of a kind and original. I would never sell it. I just recently put it on the wall so you can see it today. And, um, you know, and it's an original, so I would never sell it. But, you know, when you're 10, you don't think of that kind of stuff. You're just like, yeah, that's cool. Like, I actually had animation drawings back then, and I didn't, I didn't take care of stuff like that. But with the toys, I always kind of had them displayed, and as it got older, I realized the value of everything and realized you know, what my mom used to tell me when I'm like 10, 11 years old, when we go to swap meets and she's like, oh, we could salvage it for parts. 
like a push like a push puppet without a head. And you know, back then I'm like, what are you talking about? But she was so right because now people are buying body parts of toys on eBay and trying to complete their sets of stuff that they had when they were young. So I'm that guy now, <laughs> just buying stuff. And now I've gotten more like, I've gotten most of the American made stuff, but I'm really crazy about a lot of foreign figures. Oh, that's and where, there's where, so much, huh? Where do you usually buy your stuff? Are you, are you eBay or are you, are, do you have other stuff? Yeah, for a while, you... like almost 10 years straight, I was getting a lot of stuff like at swap meets and that's more fun to buy them that way. Because you feel like you've like rescued it, and sometimes these people don't know what they have. But there's more and more competition now of people buying stuff, and a lot of people, a lot of the Japanese, they love our characters, so they're buying everything and taking it back to Japan, and they have like incredible collections of not just Flintstones, like everything you can think of that's an American cartoon, they have the toys to it and they can spend the money easily. <laughs> um, so I think a lot of vendors today and people that sell stuff, they're getting more wise and old Hanna-Barbera cartoons, they're very expensive toys. But thank God my mother collected the bulk of my collection. So I have most of the stuff like board games and uh, dolls and bed sheets, like everything you can think of. You know, I have something like a Flintstone. I have books and records and which all that stuff's packed away. <laughs> but I'm a real figure guy. I like figural stuff. Nice, um, nice. You know, but I love all the glassware as well. And, you know, I love, uh, like there's a place called Bedrock City, an old theme park and I love stuff from there and it's very rare to find pieces to old Bedrock City stuff and I have a lot of it but it's just hard to find these days but any of this stuff is hard to find nowadays and there's a lot of stuff on eBay a lot of movie stuff that us collectors will not buy it's oh. bad <laughs> so you're like, saying you weren't particularly fond of the two movies that came out no, oh, three. hated it, hated it. I, I love John Goodman. I love Rosie O'Donnell. It's not their fault they're in a terrible movie. It's basically, and it's not Hanna-Barbera's fault either. It's the studio at the time. It just was a really bad movie. And But there's so much merchandise from that movie that has littered eBay. So when you type in vintage Flintstones, you still get a lot of that movie stuff. So a lot of us diehard collectors want to burn all of it all of it so you know we're doing well, our part to rid the earth of it <laughs> funny thing is i used to work at ben benuto here in west hollywood and uh -huh. they both came in during uh rosie and uh john goodman used to come into the restaurant during the filming of uh the flintstones so that's just a little thing we used to talk about flintstones well, you know, like I, I heard Rosie on an interview, on, you know, at the time they offered me the job and what was I supposed to say? No, I, she was thrilled to do it. And as an actress, I don't blame her. It's just like, you know, Brandon Ralph was a, played Superman. He was just in a bad Superman movie, but he was, he's a good actor. That's <laughs> it's very not true. His fault. That's very true. He, he got hired to do it because he looked the most like Christopher Reeve. So, <laughs> you know, but I think John Goodman doesn't want anything to do with the movie. Oh, and, you so know, why did they do part know. two? Didn't they all come back to for part two or just a couple of them came back? No, a whole different cast. Oh, okay. That's why I was thinking. Was yeah. movie. Like, all right. I think they had Stephen Baldwin as Barney, but anyways, let's not talk about that horrible movie. <laughs> <laughs> It's like you and me and Charlie's Angels 2019. Let's never talk about the movie again. <laughs> there you exist. go. So what was your very first piece of Flintstone did you own or do you remember having? Well, and I will send you the picture later because I'm probably about one and a half years old.
but it's a Knickerbocker Fred doll. And I have one here. It's not the one I had when I was a little kid, but if you can see them, it's this ugly doll right here. <laughs> he is not ugly. You see it? And I have a matching Barney right over here. And I have Dino, but he's packed away. Um, but yeah, I have a picture of myself when I'm probably a toddler and that's on the floor. So I would imagine that was probably the first thing I had. But I had all kinds of stuff as a kid. <laughs> yeah, that looks very, very, very vintage. How much do those go for? It varies. I actually found Fred and Barney a few years ago at a swap meet. And I think I paid like 50 bucks for the pair. Wow. Which was, and that was probably 10 years ago. Wow. Um, but it's, it's in great condition. I wish I had the hang tag to it, but you know, it's like I've seen other dolls in terrible condition. <laughs> exactly. So what is your but most, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. What is your most prized possession you have in your collection? Um, well, right now, probably like this set. See this set right here behind me? On the yeah. top shelf? Sure can. Yes, those are Barta, those are Bartoplast from Colombia, and they're probably the most expensive Flintstones you can buy. <laughs> and I'm missing Hoppy, but they made so many of them in different shapes and colors, and they're from Colombia, 1967. Wow! Try to get a little closer for you. Can you see them? Absolutely. Betty and Wilma are always the most expensive. One more time. Who's the cheapest to get? Uh, I said probably the kids are Fred. The kids are Fred. You would think Dino would be. Yeah. No, he's... It's weird with the orders. It's like, I would say Hoppy is the most expensive, and then Betty and Wilma, and then ba and then Dino and Barney, and then probably the kids, and then Fred. Actually, ceramics called Ternavaga from 95. And I just re got Betty and Wilma and Dino to that. I had all the other ones, but it just takes many years to collect all of them. Uh, they're, they're sort of mixed in here right now. Uh, Dino's blue. Are you able to see them? Uh, yes. So you said you just got those today? No, no, I got them. I got Dino and Betty last week. Oh, from so another collector that's been selling his collection. Yes. And how much one of, can I ask how much one And of I got you? Wilma. I'm sorry? How much one of, one of those cost? I paid 800 for Betty Wilma. What? I, I, no, no, no. I, I'm sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> I paid 800 for Betty and Dino. Oh. They're beautiful. And... Wilma was around 200 and a few years earlier I got Fred and Barney on the top shelf is the Barney the ceramic and then I have Fred and Hoppy in another cabinet I spread them all around <laughs> yeah you don't want them all in one place they're so expensive Wow. Oh, and it's just fun to like sprinkle all over the place. So, so what is your, is that one of your most expensive items you have or what's the most expensive item you have? A bar class set. The one from Columbia that I, I showed you 
a little earlier. Uh huh. That's up above here. If you can see. Those those are pretty offensive, but you know, after a while of collecting, you get to have a lot of contacts and you can do a lot of trading because they're also collectors. So a lot of things I've gotten that are very expensive by trading other collectibles that they are looking for. So there's a lot of bartering going on. So it sounds like collectors. It sounds like to me the the fan base of Flintstones are very kind people who will switch and trade and barter with you for things. Oh yeah, like it's it just seems more fun to do it that way too, because like I had a lot of other Hanna Barbera uh, cartoon characters like toys, and I just recently this year have been selling off all of that just so I can get more Flintstones that I've been wanting, because most of the American made stuff I have. And so I've been trying to get a lot of foreign stuff. And so if I could trade a bunch of like Yogi Bears and Huckleberry Hounds to get some Flintstones, then I'm going to do it. <laughs> That's fantastic. That is fantastic. That's amazing. I, I just listen to me. I, I didn't think that Flintstones would be such an expensive thing. I guess they're so retro that they would be pricey. Yeah, and it's just, you know, this year is the 60 year anniversary of the show. And so, like, a lot of people just feel really nostalgic because they, in their life, they have watched the cartoon. And I still get today, a lot of people say, I had no idea that they made that much merchandise. Huh? And there's so much, much stuff that's been produced. From how many different countries. <laughs> how much merchandise has been produced? Do you know? Uh, nobody knows. It's it's endless. I mean, I have probably, I probably have three thousand pieces, if not more, individually. Not all in this room, but I do. I do own it all, you know. And there's still a lot of stuff that's still being discovered. And there's still a lot of stuff that I don't have yet. Now, is there something uh, that just you're... Just endless amounts of things. Uh, is there something that you are desperately looking for? Um, well, like to the set, the bar, to... there's a hoppy that goes to the set. And he's expensive, like way out of my price range. I have a friend that bought one from... A guy, another collector in Italy, and she paid two thousand dollars for it. So that's just a little bit too much for me. <laughs> I understand. So, what is the appeal of Flintstones around the world? It sounds like that around the world it, they they produce things everywhere on these these little American suckers. Yeah, I well, I think at the time of the show, like. I think like they just contacted Hanna Barbera. Hey, can we make toys of your characters? And they're like, sure, go ahead. That's why later in life, when I used to see Joe Barbera when he was around 93, he was like amazed to see all of this stuff because he was like, I had no idea they made all that. And because during the 60s, he, he was so busy with the studio. He didn't have time to like literally oversee everything. He just said, sure, go ahead, make whatever you want. Because they knew it was just promoting their show. And a lot of like foreign stuff, of course, is bootleg. Or, you know, they, I don't know if they fully got permission from the studio, but they just, they produced it anyways. And so a lot of us collectors today, we are buying a lot of the foreign knock they call them like knockoffs of Flintstones and they're just and the weirder the color okay so so what is the weirdest collectible in your collection on Flintstones um god I don't have them in here he's it's like this little plastic Fred and he's just so ugly um, <laughs> where he's from, <laughs> but um, 
I got like a little Fred here. Can you see him in the pink suit with the ascot? Yes. Can you see him? Yes. That's. I just, I just, he's from Romania. Oh my God. He's from and, Romania? Uh, here's a matching black. Here's, he's from Romania. Oh and he's God. just so weird looking. I have uh, three of those Freds and three Barneys, and they all have different colors. You see the Barney in the blue? Yep, I sure do. They're called Arcanas, and Italy made some, and Romania made some. I'm going to another cabinet there. Fantastic. Uh, tucked away. There's a Fred in blue. <laughs> that was from Romania. And down below, there's a little yellow Barney. He's another one. Fantastic. One of the rarer pieces that I have that a lot of Flintstone collectors that are friends of mine don't have is this piece. This yellow cat. Yep. And that that says uh, it's called the Selco Bank from England. And I have him, and well, actually, right next to him is Hoppy to that Mexican set I was. You know. So those two are pretty rare and hard to get. <laughs> You see this Betty and Wilma right here in the corner? Yes. Those are from Peru. And I have pebbles that goes to her over here. She's kind of ugly. I don't know if you can see her. I can't, but you should never call pebbles ugly. Because Bam Bam's going to come and hit you over the head head. Well, there are a lot of ugly pebbles in Bam Bam figures. What? That's outrageous. Especially, especially the ones from the 90s. <laughs> oh. Um, if you want to see a beautiful Bam Bam and pebbles, I think. I do. Is this pair right here. Can you see them? They're adorable. Those are from Germany, and they're called Engelskinders, meaning sun children, from 1966. Those are so beautiful. I think those are the best repre representation of the kids. And up on the upper shelf, here's more to the sh more to the set. You see the Freds with the different color suits. Absolutely. And next to him is the Wilmas from Germany, and they made one red Dino to the set. You see the red Dino. Of course. And, and then next to the, you know, I Barney's in different colors. So among us collectors, we have never seen a Betty. We have a theory that she's made. Nobody owns one and nobody's ever seen her. She's hiding. So if Betty is ever found, I'm sorry. She's hiding. So anybody out there who has a Betty, quickly call Dave. He wants it. Quickly. Yes. And see above here, here's more of the Freds up here. I just love the different colors. 
And you see this set over here. Those are from Canada. Well, actually, the two kids are from another set. Those are from England. And the baby puss is actually from Sweden. It's just a case of until I get the one from Canada. <laughs> So that is actually my grail right now, is the baby puss to this set. This, this box right here, it's like a yellow box and there's like a little Fred and Dino inside. Yep, I saw it. That is like, those push puppets are very common, but the box itself are very rare to come by. That was a, a by accident find Swap me for 20 bucks. <laughs> so that was a good day that day. That is a good day. And I have two other box sets, which I paid a lot for a few years back. So do you have a wacky story about finding a collectible? Um, I have, uh, well, you know, like I go to the swap meets and a lot of times I don't find anything. And then there's some days that like, I actually find there's this other set called the Mego set, which has always been like $2,000. <laughs> wow. And it's like a little play set with the family. And I'm kind of moving the camera towards where in the back you see like this Fred leaning and then the Wilma in the back of him and there's his head laying down. Yep. And then I have the Barney that goes to it up on this shelf. But anyways, I was at a swap meet and I thought I would never own that set. And there it was, and it was like $65. Oh my gosh. So that was like, oh my gosh. And I just bought it outright. <laughs> so that was like a really fun find. But like, if you go to a toy show and see something like that, it would be like two thousand dollars. So it just it it really depends on what you can find. And now I've gotten very very selective of what I get these days. Absolutely. So and oh, you said uh, that you had met Hanna Barbera himself. Yes, Joe Barbera. I never met Bill Hanna. He had passed in the 90s. But um, Joe Barbera, I met when I was a kid, when I was with my mother. And then several years later, well, years later, when I was working at Warner Brothers, um, they had already merged. So Joe Barbera would come to the studio and just, you know, he was already in his early 90s. And it was just sort of like to get out for the day and sign autographs and see everybody. And so I would go up and talk to him all the time and his secretary, Maggie, and just kind of like, you know, hang out a little bit. And he was so nice one day that he actually gave me a Fred Flintstone doll from his office. And wow, I pulled it out. Yeah. I pulled it out just for you. <laughs> And hey, it's right over here. Lisa, eat your heart out. <laughs> See that one right there? <laughs> this doll here was sitting in his office. Can... Wow, that did he sign it for you? No, you know, it's weird. I, I'm not really big on autographs. And at the time, I was just like, are you sure, Mr. Barber? And he said, yeah, yeah, take it home. <laughs> so I've had, and that was probably like 2003. So I've had it ever since. And, that is you know, so, so it's just special that he had. And I have a picture of me and him with it. So I will send it to you if you want. Oh, yes, please. That would be amazing. <laughs> what else do we have in this little area over here? Well, I have my friend Red that makes these wall displays. He's like amazing. He's 
uh, they're like in these wall protectors, like, um, and he can build any size. So like I, I have also given him a couple of games and stuff to like make cases for. You see on the walls, like these, like they look like games. Like yes. those are pretty rare pieces. And behind this big Fred right here, it's like these pinups that were used for like children's bedrooms back in the seas. And I made a display case just for that. Same with like this old TV tray. Can you see that? Yeah, I had that old TV and tray. And it's in its own that. protective case. I had that you as did? a kid. Yes, awesome. I did. Awesome. Well, there's two of them. I think mine was yellow. Yeah, so I bought that from... Oh, well, are you sure it was this one or maybe one from the 70s? Probably the, seven, probably the 70s because I am only... <laughs> yeah. I'm only 24, right? Of course. With the right and lighting. So, hey, I, I can be the same. <laughs> exactly. I'll show you another interesting piece. Please do. Down, down below, see this right here? The Fred Flynn It's called the candy sweet store? shop. A yes. candy store. Yes. And it has all these little bottles, like, and the bottles still have the actual candy inside them. This is from the early 60s, and it was only produced in the UK. And I bought this from another collector. He's, he's been selling off his collection. Wow. It's a real beautiful piece to have. It is a beautiful piece to have. And I'm going to go up here. I'm going to go up here to show you this wall display. And do you see all these erase? Those are all erasers? Yes. Wow. There's eight of them. And I had a special case made just so they all have their own row. So there's Hoppy, Wilma, Bernie, Pebbles, Betty, Fred, Bam Bam, and Dino. So what is your favorite these character? Are, these are called Itty Bitties, and these are the jumbo ones. And I, I can't have enough of them. <laughs> I, they're, I... they're actually getting harder and harder to find. But these were on my birthday cakes when I was really little. Aww. My mom would get birthday cakes at the Webby's Bakery, and they would have them on the birthday cakes. So probably, and I have a picture when I'm like probably about five, and I have a cake in front of me. Oh, I love and that. And probably been addicted to these ever since. <laughs> I will send you that photo too. Perfect. Now, Dave, which which Flintstone character is your favorite? We need to I'm know. sorry? Which is your favorite Flintstone character? Um, probably Fred and Dino. I just like, I always, I mean, I love everybody else, of course, but um, Fred and Dino, like, and especially toy wise, I always wanted the Freds and Dinos first. And everybody else came after. I'm My like least that. favorite character is Gazoo. <laughs> who's Gazoo? I don't know who, which one. Who's that? Do you remember the little alien? He came in the later seasons, like in 65, 66. Yeah. Voiced by Harvey Corman. I just, ever since I was a little kid, I've hated Gazoo. <laughs> so you don't have any Gazoos in your collection, do you? I have a Gazoo pin. And that's packed away somewhere, but that's pretty you much throw it. Draw the line at the gazoo. No gazoos. No gazoos. <laughs> um, my other my other friend Ed, he also hates kazoo, and he has a huge Flintstone collection. So there's no gazoos in his collection either. <laughs> now we're gonna have to find a kazoo but, collector to come on the show now. Yeah. Um, I have a friend, Evan, that 
has been selling off of his collection. And I, me and him all tease each other, and I tease him about he used to have a gazoo beanie baby from the Warner Brothers store. And I'm like, how could you ever buy that? Like, turn in your Flintstone card now. Oh, my goodness. But, you know, there's, there's so much stuff out there. <laughs> but I have... It's just mostly the main family. Yeah. They didn't really make a lot of other characters, like incidentals. Yeah. And Hoppy is like probably the hardest one to get because he kind of came late to the family, late and late in the show. And early on, there was so much baby puss, the cat. And that was like before Pebbles and Bam Bam came along. So like on a lot of early, early stuff, like this piece right here, this is an old wall hanger set. And it's just Fred and Baby Puss. Can you see it? Absolutely. So early marketing, they used a lot of stuff with Baby Puss. Here's another thing, the wall hanger. Uh, the pinups, baby puss is included in there. Can you see him? Whatever happened to baby puss? Did they get? He was of never it? mentioned in the show. Only uh, at the very end, when threat when Fred throws him out at night, and then he throws Fred out. And did that's he the only mention in the whole series, only thing. <laughs> Did he disappear? Did he disappear in the series when the kids came, or was it just Daniel? He was there. He just was never talked about. Oh, they ignored him like all. You know, it's like it's like Richie Cunningham's older brother just kind of disappeared. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's well, true. you know, there is a Fred Junior. That I did not know. And I'm going to show you a picture of him. He's on this Target thing. You see him? Is it the baby one down there? Can you? Can you? Yes. Well, kind of. Not now. Yeah, there he is. There's one golden book with Fred Jr. in it. This is before Pebbles. And he just sort of disappeared in the. So there's like every now and then you'll see something with Fred Jr. on it. But of course, it. when Pebbles came along, it was all about her. <laughs> well, you know, it's all about the kids. When the, once the kids came, who cares about anything else? Yep. I'm going to take you over to here. All right. Do you see this picture on the wall? Absolutely. I'm going to make it bigger. How's that? Perfect. I'm going to turn the camera this way. It was drawn by Dick Bickenbach. He was one of the original show's layout artists, and he was pretty much responsible for the design of the show. So when I was 10 years old, me and my mother were somewhere and we ran into him and my mother just started talking to him and he was to me he was just a guy that worked at Hanna Barbera I didn't know at the time and he drew me that he drew this for me wow and so my mother of course took it away and protected it and put it in the frame and I have it 40 years later practically I love your mother. Your mother, of course. Your, your mother did a lot of, I think she was as big of a collector as you were. Well, she was very ahead of her time and she knew the value of a lot of this stuff. Even in the early eighties, she knew that it would be worth something and harder to find as years went, of course. I'm turning the camera a little so you can see more stuff. And but she was very ahead of her time. What Can is that Bedrock Express? What is that? That is actually a track. 
and it's got a hand car in it with Fred and Barney and it just goes around the track and there's a little houses and trees and it's just like a little like a bedrock like neighborhood <laughs> where Fred and Barney go in the hand car all around. I actually have the hand car over here inside this shelf. Like if you can see in the back. I don't know if you're getting a glare from the plexi. It's in the back right there, the Fred and Barney. Yep. Oh, there it is. Yes, I see it. But that was that was made by Mark's Toys. And uh, it's just, uh, like, just one of the many things that they made. Turn back around so you can see more stuff. You see the old board game. I have I have a ton of board games, but I obviously can't have them all in here. Um, some games and this is like a common item that a lot of collectors have. This big Dino crane. Can you see it? I love it. Absolutely, I can see it. And it's a common thing. Mine's a pretty beat up. And above that, do you see? The, I'm going to turn the camera so you can see a full shot of it. Do you see this weird Fred with the suit with all these little rings on it? Yes, I do. That is an actual store display item that was found, I guess, on a warehouse somewhere. Never been used, so I bought it from the guy. 1972, but it would sit on the, the table of the department store and people would buy the rings off of it. So I have all the rings intact. <laughs> and it's just like little Freds and Dinos and Barneys and Pebbles. That's a neat piece. I like that. We, we love old advertising pieces. <laughs> Down below here, they only sold those at Sears. What so were they called? I used to have a Mickey Mouse one. What were they a called? Zillow. Zillow? A Zillow? Like a xylophone? Nice. Can you see it? I can see it. Yeah, mine's a little mine's a little beat up, but you know, it's from the early sixties. What are you gonna do? <laughs> Down below here, you love the kids, right? This is a pull toy. A transgram pebbles and bam bam on a teeter totter. Oh, that is so cute. Can you see it? Absolutely. That is actually those are the nicest of the kids, I think, too, like besides the German figures. And to that same set, there's a Wilma and Pebbles with the baby carriage. That's adorable. Yes. So adorable. That's really cute. Um, and not to go off flints on topic, but I do have a case below full of old, old Scooby-Doo's. <laughs> oh, oh. We've already done a, we did a whole story on Scooby-Doo. Oh, Scooby also. Keep it moving. It's Hanna-Barbera. It's fine. We love Hanna-Barbera. Yeah, him. he's part of the family. Exactly. Oh my gosh, this has been fantastic. Thank you for taking the time to, you're blowing my mind with all the amazing things with, with the Flintstones. <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah, and I made on Flintstones. Oh God, there's so much stuff out there. I'm still, I'm always looking. And as I get older, all I want to do is have like my own museum, so I can have everything displayed properly, and I would love people to come see it. <laughs> Absolutely. So, okay. And I did have my stuff at a museum about four years ago at the Norman Rockwell Museum in Massachusetts. Wow. They actually um, flew me out there, but they had, they actually shipped all my toys out there in, from California to Massachusetts. 
but it was all Barbera. So I had all Hanna. I mostly have Flintstones in it, but but I had a lot of other Hanna Barbera on display as well. Okay. But that was so, bad. and I would I would just love to do that again, like have another exhibit with display. You see that yellow? Yes, I can Weird see that. With the yes, character. I sure can. What is it? That is an actual, that's a rubber lamp from Australia. And for some reason, Bam Bam has black hair. That's interesting. That's very interesting. And there's a Hoppy the Hopperoo board game. You see that? Yep. And do you see this orange dinosaur, the bedrock bus? I love it. Yes. That is my, one of my good friends, Lance Smith made that. He's also a Flintstone collector and enthusiast and an amazing sculptor. He can make anything. So he's made a whole line of different Flintstone characters. Oh, very nice. Which are all for sale too. If he can make anything. <laughs> Just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> so how much do you think your whole collection's worth? Uh, priceless, but I don't know, maybe a million, close to a million, maybe a little less. I don't know. Wow. It, it, it's really depends on who's willing to pay for it. And there's some pretty wealthy guys that are collectors out there, especially like a lot of Japanese guys. They have the money and that would be nothing to them to buy it. And they would love it. And, um, you know, they love toys. That's And they make the best toys. If you ever look at toys from Japan, they're the best made toys. Yes. They're, so. they're, they're uh, the actual news, uh, magazines they made in the 70s are even better than what they make now yeah. today. So, um, and they really know, the, and they're really into figures, and they love three-dimensional figures. But, um, yeah, and, you know, they just there's so many collectors out there from literally any country you can think of. Absolutely, absolutely. What? Well, if someone has something they want to offer you, if they have the one that you were looking for or or something, where can people find you? Um. Yeah, it depends on how much, or maybe I can trade them some other toys. You never know. So they can find you on Facebook. A lot of other Hanna Barbera I got to get rid of, and I have a lot of Looney Tunes toys that I could trade. Um, I have a lot of Popeye, but I'm not going to trade any of that. That's that's also going to stay with me till I die. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been fantastic. Thank you for taking the time today and showcasing your amazing amazing Flintstones. I mean, Oh, thank you. I, you know, I didn't ask, what is your favorite episode of the Flintstones? How about that? Uh, probably the Flintstones flyer where Barney makes the like little helicopter and Fred and Barney lie to the girls about going, uh, being sick to get out of the opera. Ooh. And so, they use the Flintstone flyer to go bowling instead. And they put on disguises. And of course, Betty and Wilma happen to go in the bowling alley and discover them. And so, but it's one of the early ones, like the first episode. Um, that's probably one of my favorites. That's beautiful. I'm going to have to find it on, on something and watch it myself. Well, Dave. Oh, it's, it's easy to find. Dave, thank you so much for taking the time today on Collector's Haven and sharing your collection with everybody out there. I appreciate it. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for the invite. Absolutely. Everybody out there in the world watching on the internet, thank you for watching today's episode. Dave has showcased his beautiful collection. If you have a collection you want to be on the show, please let me know. 
please share this all to your friends, family, and even enemies because you know what? Bam Bam needs to find them and Bam Bam them. <laughs> that does not make sense. But anyway, I thought it was funny for in my brain. Um, do you want to sing the Flintstone song for me? Not really. Really? <laughs> Flintstone. Oh, oh, God, I'm not. It's a yabba nah. time. It's gay old time. There you go. Bye, everybody. Thanks and for watching. And I got to stay out for the night. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for watching.